Hi everyone, and welcome to the third part of recreating Eowyn's white dress, a series where I hand sew Eowyn's iconic dress from The Lord of the Rings. As the title suggests, this video will show you how I did the embroidery around the neckline, and how I tackled the challenge, which is the belt. It's on a cloudy, rainy day that we begin our journey. First, let's look at the fabric girdle. With her ensemble, Eowyn wears a girdle, or a belt, with this long hangy piece, for lack of a better wording, which is embroidered in gold. On top of that, she wears a metal belt comprised of two types of silver and gold medallions with these whimsical vine-slash-flower shapes. First, I cut two long strips of cream cotton twill, the same as I used for the dress, and sewed them together, then added this shiny gold tape around the sides. Then, I proceeded to do some actual embroidery. So, Eowyn's belt has this pattern on it, like half moons. You get the picture. So, I tried to recreate it, and I basically just went twice over with the golden thread, making these semi-circles out of tiny stitches. As for the length, I made them stretch across three peaks on this wavy golden tape, leaving about a quarter of an inch in the middle between the semicircle on one side and the one that on the other. It's easier if you just look at the video, rather than me trying to explain. On the back, where there was a mess of threads and raw edges, I just whip stitch on this white lining to cover it all up and make it smooth. For the part that goes around my waist, or rather hips, I just added this gold wavy tape. No half circles of embroidery, because I found it would be a waste of time, since they will be completely covered by the metallic belt discs. Now for the neckline embroidery. I found this reference photo and basically drew the pattern, first on paper, and then slightly simplified onto the dress with a pencil. Yep, that simple. I made sure to also check what it's supposed to look like in the middle where the two ends of the vines meet. And so I grabbed my gold and silver threads, a needle, and off I went embroidering the pattern onto the neckline. This was a much more enjoyable process than I thought. At first I had this idea that this is going to be the hardest thing to do on this dress, and I mean, it still doesn't look super perfect, but I am very happy with how it looks, and it was quite fun and enjoyable making it, and didn't take that long at all. Similarly to the girdle, I hid the threads and knots behind a thin layer of lining.
and finally the metal discs. Now, this was quite a challenge because I didn't know how to make them. I had several ideas, so I started with a sketch to try and see what sort of parts I would need. There are two types of the discs. The middle one, which is a bit bigger and different from the rest of the slightly smaller ones. After research and studying the photos, which was a bit of a blur, I came to the conclusion that there needed to be three pieces for the center medallion, and I settled on three for the rest of them as well. My initial plan was to make them out of wire and some kind of aluminum or other malleable light material, but as I was searching for supplies, I came across these lifesavers on Amazon. They go under the name of uh, filigree pendant links and are meant for making jewelry, but I was so happy to have found them because they turned out to be the perfect size and even their shape and all these little intricate carvings were vaguely reminiscent of the designs on Eowyn's metal discs. They come in gold, silver and bronze, even though it looks brown, but trust me, it's bronze. They're nice and bendable, but still hold a shape. I decided to do the following with them. For added sturdiness and layered effect as the originals have, I decided to use the bronze one under and the silver disc on top. Connect them with wire to the other pair of discs and repeat the process until I had a belt long enough to sit snugly around my hips. For the middle piece, I contemplated on using a gold one, but I ended up hating it, so I made them all silver. What I did for the middle piece, though, was that I made this shape out of gold and silver wire and I attached it to the middle, so now this one stands out a bit as it should. I also added this very primitive closure, a bit of wire on both ends. Now this metal bell doesn't look 100% identical to the original, but I honestly love it so much and I think it comes very close and I'm very excited to see what it will look like with the end design. It will still capture the spirit and the essence of the garment, and, and at the end of the day, that is my goal. If you haven't yet, I invite you to take a look at the previous two videos on this gown, leave a like and comment and subscribe to stay tuned for this as well as other projects. The next part of this series that will cover the sleeves and finishing of the garment is coming up in about two weeks time. Till then, 